we are going to check your answers for the cross sections lab that you did through GeoGebra. When you cut a cube perpendicular to its base, you should get a square. When you cut it parallel to its base, you should also get a square. Now, when you cut a diagonal, you don't actually get a perfect square, you get a parallelogram. If you cut off one corner of a cube, you're going to get a triangle. If you cut off all the way through two corners, you're going to get a rectangle. And then you could have found any other that you wanted. Now let's look at these shapes. If you cut a cylinder perpendicular to its base, which means that you would cut it all the way straight down, and then you would look at what's left inside, you would get a rectangle. If you cut it parallel to its base, so straight across, you would get the shape that its base is, which is a circle. If you cut it diagonally, you're going to get an elongated circle or an oval. Now the word that we use for an oval is actually an ellipse. So for this, you would get an ellipse. For a rectangular prism that is cut perpendicular to its base, you are going to get a rectangle. Parallel to its base is another rectangle. And diagonally is a parallelogram. For a cone that is cut perpendicular to its base, so straight up and down, you're going to get a triangle. Parallel to the base is the shape of the base, which is a circle. And diagonally is going to be the shape of the base, but elongated, so it will be an ellipse. A square pyramid cut perpendicular to the base, so straight up and down, is going to give you the, the shape of one of its faces, which is a triangle. Parallel to the base is going to give you the shape of the base which is a square. Diagonally will give you a parallelogram. For a triangular prism, if you cut it perpendicular to its base, you are going to get a rectangle or a parallelogram. Now this can be kind of confusing, but you have to remember that when you're cutting it parallel to its base or, or perpendicular to its base, you're cutting through the base. Well, if it's a triangular prism, the base is this triangle. So you're really cutting it through like this. So that means what you're looking at are these sides, which are rectangles or parallelograms. Now parallel to the base would actually be this way, which means you're looking at the base, which is this triangle. Diagonally would be another triangle, just a little bit elongated. For a triangular pyramid, no matter how you cut it, because every side is a triangle, you are going to get some sort of triangle. For a sphere, a sphere is one of those interesting shapes where no matter how you cut it, you should always get a circle. Even when you cut diagonally, because a sphere is round on all sides, no matter what way you, cu you cut it, you are really cutting it somehow straight through, which is a perfect circle. All right, so just to go over some of these shapes, a prism is a three-dimensional figure with two congruent parallel bases that are identical, and you need to know that they are named by the shapes of their bases. And the faces of those are always parallelograms. Pyramids are three-dimensional figures that have one base that is a polygon and three or more triangular faces that meet at a point. And both pyramids and prisms get their names by the shape of their base. All right, so a cross section is the two dimensional shape that appears when you slice a figure. So in this case, we sliced a, a prism and this gray part is the cross section. So the cross section here would be this rectangle. So for a rectangular prism, any cross section that takes the same shape as the base of the prism or a face happens when it is sliced parallel to the base. You could form a trapezoid by slicing the angle so that it looks similar to this. So this is a strange way to slice a prism, but you can do this and it would give you a trapezoid. All right, so for pyramids, the cross section would be a rectangle if that pyramid is sliced parallel to the base and the uh, base is a rectangle. The cross section would be a triangle when it's perpendicular to the base through the top. It could form a trapezoidal cross section when it is perp perpendicular or at an angle to the base, but it does not go through the center. So it doesn't go through that point at the top. You could create a trapezoid. All right, now for spheres, the cross section is a circle always. 
when you look at this figure, it doesn't matter how you cut it. These are always circles because no matter where you cut it on a sphere, it is a perfect circle. It is never possible to form a cross section of a rectangle or a triangle or even an ellipse because the only cross section possible is a circle.